hello everybody, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. It's a beautiful Tuesday and I hope you are well today. We started talking about yesterday a collision course. What were we talking about? How, how were we getting there based on this passage of scripture from chapter four of the book of Acts? Again, I, I ended off yesterday talking about having to understand that our cultures are on a collision course. What does that mean? Well, I guess in simplicity, what we want to look at, it's the world versus the truth. Now, the truth has become a, a controversial topic in this world today because truth becomes what one creates it to be rather than what it actually is. See, oftentimes we're presented things in front of us on the television or right here on online that is told to be the truth when in fact it's not and never has been. I mean, I know people that uh, they operate their whole life that way. Everything about them is completely, completely deception uh, from, from everything that's been said, but yet still presented as truth. Events that were often told took place really didn't. I mean, I could go on and on and on, and that's not to go down the conspiracy road, but I've seen it with my own eyes, friends. You got to remember, I worked on the road for many, many years. I'd work crime scenes and see it reported be the complete opposite of what really happened. That stuff's real. When it comes to, when it comes to our faith, what I want us to see today in this portion of this lesson called Collision Course is the boldness to stand for what we know is true, not what we've been told. Truth, again, it is a very, very controversial subject. Jesus teaches that he is the truth. So what does that require? I got to get to know him. I've got to come to know Christ in a very close and intimate way more than anything else in my life. If, if we, as individuals, as individual believers, if we collectively as the church, if we are truly going to make an impact, and I mean a real impact, in our communities, in our homes, in our churches, in our nation, in our world, then we have to understand that is the opponent that we're facing because it is the world versus the truth. The world system, not the world population, the world system of I want it my way. The enemy's lies about you can do that. You can do whatever you want and there's no consequence and you can live how you want and you can act how you want. But it's just like I wrote, I wrote earlier today, until, that word until, that, that is the... That word becomes relevant when we continue, when we continue to travel down a pathway and never consider the consequence. Keep on going until then. And then you find out, oh, wait a minute, that was actually true. If we look at this text today, we see strength and we see boldness. Again, reading from reading from Acts chapter 4. And we said yesterday, the verse, first four verses, we see in the last part of that, verse four, but many of those who heard the message, so, so they'd been speaking, they'd been teaching this truth. It said many of those who believed the message and the number of those came to about 5,000. Okay, so, so we see faith on display without shame. In other words, I know this is true. I can't make you receive it. I can't force it on you. I can't do anything but share it. But not share it in an irrelevant way or share it in a performance way, but share it from my heart. That doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be over the top. It certainly doesn't have to be forceful or, or you know, filled with spit and stomping and carrying on. No, it's, it's about sincerity. We all know in conversations that we have with different people, we know whether they mean what they're saying or not. Now, some people are very good actors and they can 
convince you, but eventually there becomes cracks in that after a while and you realize that it's just, again, another deceptive person that lives in a bubble. But, but when we see here, these ones that are sharing, in particular, Peter and John, they were not intimidated. They weren't. And we would have to ask, well, well, why? Because some people today are hesitant because they say, well, the world's a big, scary place. Again, we're not talking about geographically and we're not talking about the population. We're talking about the system that has been created. But these two weren't intimidated. They had a boldness. Why? because they knew Jesus. They had walked with him. They had talked with him. They had seen him in action. They knew it firsthand. Friends, we can have that too. While he may not physically walk among us right now, we can know him in such a clear way that there is absolutely no question as to who he is and what he means to our life. And we can speak in the boldness of that relationship they knew him. They believed him. And they weren't going to be told that he didn't matter. They were not going to be told that he was irrelevant because they knew better. So that bears the question of our relationship with Christ. Do we know better? This is not about Sunday morning going to church. This is not about, you know, getting up in the morning and reading your Bible so you feel better about yourself. And I don't say that to be critical or judgmental, or, or any other, or assuming. I'm saying, do we know him? Do we have that boldness that he places within our hearts? We are called to be bold, stand strong in the word, stand strong. In, and I don't talk, and I'm not talking about being dogmatic and legalistic and, and all the silly things that I hear sometimes that come out of people's mouth that don't know what they're talking about. I'm talking about what does he impart? to us? What does he give to our hearts? What does he say about our faith? There are going to be times when we stand clear on what we believe, not just because we were told it, but because we know it from just that, just that intimacy with him, that we just know the clarity of what he's saying. That is why I teach in the manner that I teach. That is why I teach what I teach here at Making It Simple, because it is clear and a lot of times, tradition and ritual has gotten it wrong. And, and I say that boldly, not to, not to ruffle feathers or, or stir up whatever, but, but we've, we've developed a system oftentimes that is not compatible with what Jesus actually said. That's where the difference comes in. That is why we see the boldness in this particular passage. And it will get stronger as we continue to look at it when these are faced by the world system saying, you can't do that. And they're saying, we don't have a choice because we know the truth. That's where things get different. There are going to be times that our faith will have a collision with the world if we really mean it. So the question is, what do we do? What do we do in those moments? Number one, share the gospel. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do. We look further in this same chapter, beginning in verse eight. And I love this. This is powerful. It says, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the boldness that's been given to him, he said to them, rulers of the people and the elders. So we, now we know who he's talking to, the ones in control, the world system. If we are being examined today, if you're taking a look about a good deed done to a disabled man, they had helped someone, by what means he was healed, let it be known to all of you. In other words, listen to what I'm saying and to the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, so he's, he's very bold. He said, you're the one that got rid of him. I'm telling you here, here's the deal. And God raised from the dead, he's no longer in the grave. By him, this man standing here before you is healthy. This Jesus this Jesus, the stone you rejected, the one that you got rid of, the one rejected by you builders 
has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we shall be saved. Nothing else can be said any stronger or bolder than that. Do we have that clarity in our stance? Do we realize the collision course that we're on? Share the gospel. Share the gospel. That's the answer. Take a firm stand in what we believe because if you know that it's true and there's not a question about that, he will give you the strength that you need. We'll continue looking at collision course when we come right back here tomorrow for some more Making It Simple.